Basically, what I'm considering is that I am in 123B and I'm on the surface drawing. Um, and what I did is I used the polyline tool to create a side portrait of my shoe. Now, depending how you want to do this, you could really measure out a, first of all, your diameters and everything when you know if you're in centimeters, millimeters, inches. But I'm doing just the side profile to start. So picturing my shoe and pretending that there's not even, and I can amend it as needed to, but picturing my shoe and pretending that there is not even um, the top. I'm going to make the top later as a separate extrusion. I think I would create my measurement and extrude that side profile. I'm reminding of extrusion, again, when you know your measurements. Um, you're just going to bring it out the measurement of your foot. So how far across your foot it needs to go for the full length, length of the width, the wedge. That would be your first step. Uh, once you have that basic shape, then you're going to be able to really start tweaking it. So again, this is just what my foot is going to sit on top of. I haven't made a cutout or a place to actually hold my toe yet per se. Um, Reminder that I always work on lots of different angles so you can actually see where the heck straight is and all that jazz. Zero degrees. It does not look like zero degrees to me. Um, there we go, that's straight. Okay, from there, for the rounding of certain parts of your shoe, you can select the sideline. And the sideline becomes editable again, so you can create that rounded with the fillet and fillet the edges. Reminder that zoom in when you're working on it, otherwise the computer uh, gets mad. <laughs> and then that will start creating that form. Um, from the back, same deal if you want to create um, an indent. I know you were looking at having a space in between. I would create a shape. That would subtract from it. So for example a wedge uh, to me that would be something I could subtract through it. Um, I would take this and rotate the wedge. Oh, 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 oh. Rotate this wedge to be something that I'm going to cut out from my shoe because I know you're looking to do that. So I'm going to make sure that first of all it's long enough to cut out from my shoe. So it's got to be obviously longer than the width of the shoe. If it's way longer, totally fine. It still works. Uh, I'm going to move that into the placement of where I'd like my cutout to be uh, to start creating that style. And it doesn't have to be straight on. Um, this is your shoe. You can do whatever you want. But look from it from multiple sides. See what it actually is starting to look like. If it works for you or doesn't work for you. Um, you'll know right away. Um, but I'm just going to create that little cutout uh, that we had talked about when it's right and it's straight all these little things make a huge difference Ooh, again it looks straight from one view you gotta look from another view see what the heck it actually looks like um and then if i'm happy with that the way that goes i am going to use my subtracting menu to say from my shoe subtract that shape enter and it's gone now again, all this stuff too, I can start to round out too. So now I have, I'm going to hide my floor sketches. Now I have this part here that I'm able to grab that corner line. I cannot emphasize enough how important it is to zoom in with every single thing you do or you will run into lots of headaches. Um, your mouse, the rolly ball, where are you going to do that? Now I'm starting to actually create that base structure for my shoe. Um, the poly lines and all those effects you were looking for, the low poly effect. Obviously, I haven't created a very complex shape. There's not many polys here in my design. Um, I could look to actually add a couple polys to it um, to start creating more poly lines in my shape. I would not. What I think the next step needs to be once you've made your shoe is to send it to Mesh Mixer. Um, Mesh Mixer uh, lets you start modifying your design more in a plan. It's kind of like a material mapping program. Um, and there is uh, tons of different polyline shapes in here. For example, this 
one I believe is even called low poly. Um, but when you actually bring it in to your design, you can change the sh size of it, the location of it, and it starts to see how it starts going through your design. So you can kind of tweak it as needed um, and scale it and rotate it. But when you're happy with how that looks, you can have as many as you like, you append it to your shoe and you say accept and it gets morphed into your shoe. So obviously one looks ridiculous, but if you start having more and more of these at the finishing stages um, and the way they overlap and placement, it'll start looking, I think, pretty cool. Um, that would be one idea I have for you. I'm going to keep looking, but just for now, um, A, focus on the measurements of the shoe. Starting from that side view, I think is easiest because it really lets you have um, your measurements under control. So choosing if you measured millimeters, centimeters, inches, doesn't matter. Um, just go to that top view, I'm just going to leave this, and select your polyline or spine tool, depending if you're doing a curved or straight line, and start to draw out your shoe. Um, so you can start seeing your measurements as you start working after this point, um, or you use the ruler of the grid paper. So you can see the ruler below is five. So for me, my foot is not five. So I would need to, hello zoom bar, I would need to change that to, you know when you want a pan hand. There's my pan hand. Wonderful. Um, so just ensure that you can actually see what you're working for. So your grid will grow. If your grid is not long enough, it will grow. But think of this as this is an eight inches long. Um, so if you need it to be eight inches long, then you'd be right over here. Um, and then you're able to create that shape that you're starting to look for, for your wedge. And then we'll start to create that structure of your shoe. Um, but again, and then how high off the ground you want it. That's an important part too. Um, and then if none of this works the way you're looking for, you're able to adjust stuff afterwards. Um, and you can amend as many times as you'd like and scale. But spend time on that side sketch because as you saw, the other steps didn't take too long to actually start tweaking it. So actually get your side measurements on and then do the same exact deal when you know what you actually want the sole to look like. You could do a couple things. You could use a torus to overlap on top of or you can create um, two varying sizes of uh, the hemisphere and you can have that go onto the toe up here and have a large one and subtract a smaller one and create that cutout for it. Up to you. Lots of options. Um, but that's a good starting point for you. Um, I hope that 